I used to have this image in my mind, this ideal of spiritual perfection that I aspired to live up to. And because I didn't measure up to that ideal, I would often feel inadequate, ashamed, discouraged. There'd be a lot of self-judgment there. And this image was based on what I saw in others, in particular, the saints and spiritual teachers who I most admired. They seemed to be always happy or at peace, devoid of any sort of negative emotions. And I really wanted to embody that ideal. And so anything in myself that didn't fit with that, I would reject. But there came a point at which I began to realize that avoiding or denying these aspects of myself was not the way to resolve them. In fact, it was just postponing it all for later, because whatever it was that I was rejecting, it still remained in me. I hadn't gotten rid of it. And the best I could do was try to suppress it. But as much as I would push these things down, they would continue to rise up again. And it takes a great deal of energy to keep pushing it down over and over again. It's a constant struggle. It can be very exhausting. And many times I would find that I just didn't have the energy to keep up with it. There were times when I would find myself feeling overwhelmed by depression, loneliness, frustration, resentment, desires of various kinds, whatever it happened to be. And on top of that would be this feeling of defeat, of feeling disappointed with myself, feeling ashamed, feeling diminished, because I always felt short of that spiritual ideal. But I was also beginning to realize that this approach was counterproductive. By avoiding these things, I was also avoiding the process, avoiding the inner work, avoiding my own growth, avoiding the real spiritual journey. And I mention this because it seems to be a common theme for many people. It seems that many have in mind a similar ideal that we try to embody through a similar kind of rejection or resistance, along with the tendency to feel ashamed for not living up to that ideal. And maybe it's also about being impatient, and that we're trying to rush the process, trying to force things rather than allowing it to unfold naturally, or perhaps to bypass the process altogether. We can even delude ourselves into believing that we've transcended certain aspects, when in actuality, all we've really done is repress them. Or perhaps we idolize these teachers too much, not taking into account that they were much like us at some point on their own journey, or that perhaps some of them are still very much like us in more ways than we realize. Maybe we assume too much. Maybe we uh, imagine them in a way that isn't an accurate perception of who they are. Or maybe we don't take into account the inner work that they have done, the same kind of work that we might be avoiding. Whatever the case, I had begun to realize that Rejecting these things in myself was not working. Condemning these things in myself was not working. Condemning myself was not working. The fact that there were unpleasant emotions, there were negative thoughts, there was insecurity, there was suffering, there was uncertainty, there were various desires and attachments, there were all sorts of things, all of which are common to this human experience. And I had come to hold the idea that there was something profoundly wrong with that, that it was something to be rejected. There's a very well-known saying that probably many of you have heard, that we are not human beings having a spiritual experience, 
but rather we are spiritual beings having a human experience. It's this beautiful idea that who you are, who you really are at the core of your being, is beingness itself, spirit, consciousness, awareness, call it what you like. It's this understanding that who you are is not this human organism, not this body, not this mind, these thoughts, these feelings, these roles that we play, the various identities that we take on, but that we are that spirit which inhabits this form, that we are spirit which is having this experience of being human. And this understanding is really central to spirituality. The word spirituality itself points to this. The whole aim is to realize one's true nature, which is spirit. But unfortunately, there's a tendency to think that in order to realize this, we have to reject the human experience. We have to reject all of the things that are a part of that experience, human nature, human emotions, and so on. There's the sense that all of that needs to be gotten rid of. And we tend to think that in order to embody our spiritual nature, we need to deny our human nature. But supposing this human experience is offering us the best possible opportunity to awaken to our spiritual nature. Not by denying any of it, not by rejecting it, but by embracing it and exploring it, by examining it, without judgment, without condemnation, without resistance. At the very least, can we recognize that we are here in this human form, and that any resistance to that does not change the fact so can we instead learn to accept it? And I know that to some, this may sound like I'm suggesting that we remain as we are, consumed by our suffering, consumed by negative thoughts and emotions, or that we submit to our desires, that we submit to our impulses, even though they may simply lead to more suffering. But that's not at all what I'm suggesting. I'm simply suggesting that perhaps there's a better approach to all of this. For me, it seemed like a big part of spirituality was about getting rid of negative thoughts and emotions. And this seems to be a common goal for many people on the spiritual path. But supposing the problem is not that negative thoughts arise in the mind, supposing the problem is that we take them too seriously, that we give them too much value, too much importance. And if you've ever tried to get rid of these thoughts, you've probably found it impossible. Supposing that you can't get rid of them, supposing that you can't prevent them from showing up. But supposing that you can stop taking them so seriously, you don't have to believe every thought that shows up in the mind. And the thoughts which tend to disturb us the most are judgments and assumptions. They're not facts. They're opinions, interpretations, speculations. Even when it appears that we're disturbed by something that is factual, if you look a little bit more closely, there's usually a judgment there. It may not always be so obvious. Often it's lying just beneath the surface, but just look a little deeper and you'll see it. So we might notice that we still have unhealthy habits, attachments, or desires that we sometimes feel agitated or anxious or unhappy, or that we sometimes behave in ways that might be selfish or inconsiderate or unconscious or whatever it happens to be. And along with that, there's all of this judgment. And that judgment is saying to you that you aren't 
good enough as you are. That judgment is pointing out all the ways that you don't measure up and then condemning you for it. That judgment is arising from this ideal that you hold in your mind of what it means to be spiritual. But even that ideal is an assumption. And it's worth questioning that assumption. Maybe you have to redefine what it means to be spiritual. And maybe being spiritual includes accepting things as they are, including this human experience with all of its messiness. And maybe it means recognizing where you are on your journey and embracing it rather than rejecting it. Maybe the place to begin is just to recognize the kinds of judgments that we have in regard to ourselves and to see if we can let them go, to see if instead we can be kinder to ourselves, more patient, more forgiving, more understanding, more loving. Maybe it means noticing whenever we're holding some judgment or assumption, and instead of assuming that it's true, we take a moment to challenge it, to question its validity. If I find myself feeling sad or angry, that voice of judgment might show up and say, you shouldn't feel that way. It's not spiritual, or it's not acceptable for someone who is on the spiritual path. Says who? Where did that idea come from? How did I come to hold that idea? Here's a better idea. Everything can be utilized for spiritual growth and awakening. And wherever you happen to be on your journey is exactly the place that you need to be at this very moment. So if at this very moment you feel angry or sad or afraid, what can you learn from that? Maybe there's a valuable lesson there, but you have to allow that experience in order to look at it. If you reject it, you reject the lesson. Whatever we're experiencing in life at any given moment, there is something that we can learn from it. There's an opportunity for growth. There's an opportunity to awaken a little more. I've learned to simply allow things to come and go, which includes unpleasant emotions. So there are moments when I feel anger or sadness or anxiety or frustration, whatever it happens to be. And sometimes there is still some degree of judgment that shows up along with that. Sometimes there's a sense that I shouldn't be feeling this particular emotion or that I should have resolved it by now. And I have to remind myself, this is all part of being human. And it's ridiculous to expect that I'm not going to experience human emotions, human tendencies, desires, and impulses, and so on. It all comes with the package. The question is, do I let it consume me? Do I let it define me? Can I recognize these things without identifying with them? Can I recognize that all of this is just part of the program? And that even includes the judgment. Even that is part of the program. As long as I take this human experience seriously, I'm going to be disturbed by it. And as long as I'm disturbed by it, it's because I'm taking it seriously. I'm mistaking it for who I am. I'm still caught in identification with this human form. Even if I have the intellectual understanding that I'm not this human form, that I am a spiritual being having a human experience, that experience can be so convincingly real that it's very difficult not to be tangled up in it. And the best I can do is just recognize the space between awareness and experience, to keep coming back to that space, and to see that who I am is that awareness, not the experience. As much as I seem to be entangled in the experience, it seems that the journey, the spiritual process, is about getting untangled, 
bit by bit, thread by thread, moment by moment. Even if the possibility is there to drop all of it all at once, as some may suggest, that's not my current experience. And what I'm talking about here is honoring the current experience, whatever that happens to be. Not getting caught up in ideas of how it should be or could be according to some ideal or according to someone else's journey or experience, but how it actually is at this moment and honoring your own journey, your own experience. And that's the thing to understand that while we're all on this spiritual journey, that journey is different for everyone. And you can't compare your journey to someone else's. You can certainly learn from others. You can be inspired by others because there are going to be some similarities, but there's also going to be differences as well. Each of our lives is unique. And that makes your journey unique. Even if you find yourself walking upon a path that many others have walked, you may walk it differently. You may have a different stride, a different pace. And if you're thinking someone else moves faster than me, or someone else is further ahead, or I should be further ahead than I am at this moment, that's not the way to go about it. Even if you find yourself getting stuck or stumbling or falling off the path, that is also part of the path. It's all part of the journey. There really is no falling from the path. It's just that there are some parts of the journey where the path is clear and some parts where you have to make your own path through the thick of it. There are some parts where the path leads you back to things that you've left unresolved. And it can feel like you're not really getting anywhere, or like you've taken a step backward, or you're going around in circles, or you're stuck in one place with no clear sense of direction. But there's a reason why you're there, and you have to learn to trust the process. Too often we resist that process. We think to ourselves, I shouldn't be here. I thought that this thing was resolved. Why am I back at this place again? I don't want to be here. I don't want to go through this again. And maybe there's even some feeling of failure or defeat or inadequacy because of it. But the proper attitude is to say to oneself, obviously there's still work to be done in this area. Perhaps in the past I made some progress, and that progress may have been significant, and I can certainly acknowledge that, but obviously it's not finished. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. So the very fact that I find myself here in this moment faced with this challenge, whatever that happens to be, it's evidence that it's not yet fully resolved. And so I'm open and willing to work on it some more. And even to consider that I still might not fully resolve it this time around. But if I make even a little bit of progress, that's still something to account for. Maybe part of the process is to recognize when we're putting too great of an expectation on ourselves. When we're holding ourselves to too high of a standard. Maybe part of the process is to be more patient with ourselves, more forgiving, more compassionate. Maybe part of the process is learning to allow yourself to just be where you are. Can I allow myself to just be where I am at this moment, even though it's not the ideal place to be? Can I accept myself as I am at this moment? Can I love myself despite all of my flaws, my mistakes, my shortcomings? Can I let go of the idea that I should be someplace other than where I am? And it's a constant practice. Every time I fall into the trap of self-judgment, I have to practice being kinder to myself, being more gentle, more patient, more accepting. 
if I can embrace the experience while at the same time not being identified with it, there's a diminishing in the power that it has over me. Whatever is being experienced is just a passing phenomenon and it will pass. If I don't cling to it, if I just allow it space, it will pass. So what if the way to be spiritual is to fully accept and embrace this human experience? What if the way to be spiritual is to be radically honest with yourself in regard to where you are on your journey? And rather than imagining that you should be someplace else, allowing yourself to be exactly where you are at this moment, to experience whatever you're experiencing at this moment, even if what you're experiencing is confusion, even if you're feeling clouded or conflicted, even if what you feel is angry or scared, sad or depressed, lonely, dissatisfied, disappointed, frustrated, irritated. What if the way to be spiritual is to acknowledge and accept all of the things that you generally reject about yourself? All of the things that you tend to feel ashamed of your shortcomings, your inadequacies, your mistakes, your misdeeds, your failures, and so on. And instead of turning away from all of that, you turn toward it, you face it, you go into it, explore it, examine it, and seek to better understand it. What if the most spiritual thing you can do is embrace yourself just as you are in this moment with loving kindness and compassion, with forgiveness, with patience and understanding, with acceptance and appreciation instead of judgment, rejection, and condemnation? To accept yourself as you currently are rather than wishing that you were different, wishing that you were further along, to accept being unenlightened, to accept being not yet fully awake, to accept not yet being fully self-realized, or whatever it is that you're aspiring to. What if the key to all of that is acceptance? What if the more you embrace this human experience and relax into it, the more you become free of it? I've come to understand more and more that spirituality has a great deal to do with seeing things as they are. And that includes the way we are, here and now, wherever we happen to be in life, not getting caught up in some image or fantasy, but seeing yourself just as you are here in this moment with all of your imperfections, all of your limitations your fears and insecurities, desires and impulses, all of your various characteristics and tendencies, both pleasant and unpleasant, as well as the whole array of emotional experiences. All of the things that come along with being human, seeing all of that and day by day, moment by moment, letting go of the judgment and embracing the experience. 